Last time on That Gets My Goat. Must touch boobies. How was your Valentine's Day? My feelings had really changed for this girl. And in seeing her dressed as a man, for some reason, I was super, super attracted to her. I mean, like more <laughs> than I ever had been before. You know, it's like, ah, oh, kind of thing. Everybody, welcome to That Gets My Goat on the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine. Uh, so this this happened, and I wasn't getting the vibe from her like, if, if you recall, the first night that the two of us got together again after all these years, she told me that she'd come with Denny, but that they had their respective homes. Right. You know, which I figured was a hint. It's like, hey, I'm single if you're interested kind of thing. And she would say little things, and I would think, oh, she is interested. Well, that's funny. I'm, I'm getting interested too. And then other times she would say things where I'd be like, oh, whoops, silly me to think she might have been interested. And uh, during this night last week, there wasn't any of the things, you know, it's just like, hey, we're just friends, we're buddies. But because of our shared history and, you know, the stuff that happened many moons ago, I felt so comfortable with her, you know, it's just one of those people that's a friend and, and you know, you, I can say something with her. And we do have a level of communication that I don't have with any other girls, which I have to chalk up to our shared experience, or maybe she's just much more open. Although I did ask her at one point, do you have conversations like this with guys all the time? And she said, no. I'd be like, oh, well, that was the correct answer. Thank you. <laughs> but I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, anyhow, it, it was weird. It was, it was, it was a different side of her. Uh, at one point, somebody got up and was singing some song where everybody gets up and dances and we all got up and danced. And yeah, it was one of those, I looked over at her and smiled and I was just like, wow, I want her to dance with me for a long, long time. <laughs> and then that was a nice sensation. It, it really was. Anyhow, afterward, we had this conversation and I congratulated her on the performance and people seemed to think it was really good. And she said, oh, you know, I had this huge crush on Axl Rose when I was a kid. I was like, really? He's like, yeah, he was my first crush or my first love or whatever it was. And I was like, wow. And you said, yeah, I have this huge crush on Axl Rose right now. Let's see. Where were what you then? What did I do? I've never been hot for a man before, but. Where was Bad Donald on my shoulder then? <laughs> but no, I'm going to something very similar. Okay. She said, uh, my first crush was Axl Rose. You know, I was so into him and, you know, not so much anymore. Now I'm into Slash. And there was silence. Where it's just like, if it were anybody else except for me, I'd know that that was some kind of romantic overture to say that, you know? <laughs> Anyhow, we talked until 5 a.m., the two of us, talked about stuff that I had wanted to talk about for a long, long time and asked her a couple of questions. Because I, in all the years since I saw her, I, I wanted to know... What, what, what was it that I did right with you that I never did with anybody else to make you like me, to make you interested in me, to make you friggin' go completely nuts over me the way that I go over girls all the time? And I, I never saw her again, so I was never able to ask that question. And finally, it's like, hey, while I've got you, I've needed to ask this question. What was it that I said or did or what was it about me that you liked so much so that I can do it? again. And she says, nothing. You're exactly the same as you were then. And again, I was just like, <laughs> if it were anybody else, I'd say, okay, you're saying that I'm still that, all those things. <sighs> it may be that we're just friends now. And that's nice. It's better than nothing because I've had nothing <laughs> and it's better. But, uh, Seeing her with the, she had the bandana on and the, you know, <laughs> Axl Rose hair. I'm surprised she didn't draw on facial hair because I remember he would always have stubble and stuff. Gruff. It was an eye opening. It was, it was, I saw her in a different way than I ever had before. It was so strange. And yeah, and there was even more I wanted to tell you about it, but it seems almost too personal. You know, it's like, okay, how much am I allowed to say on a podcast with almost five listeners yeah you know and how much of it is like you know you probably should just keep that to yourself come on man but you know me uh, my internet persona my rich outfield persona is me 
<laughs> you know, everything that Rish has experienced, I have experienced. It's not like I make up stories for Rish to tell. We had that conversation the other day where, with Abby Hilton, where she's like, you've got this persona, this umbrella that you can hide behind, but you use my name and it's me. And everybody's going to know that that's Abby that you're talking about. And I, I, I don't feel that way. I feel that if somebody walked up to me at a convention and, and said, hey, Rish, uh, I know you from the podcast. We could sit down and have a conversation and they would not say, wow, well, you're totally different in person. They'd be like, wow, I do know you. <laughs> See, I, I don't know what you want to, uh, how many of the beans you want to spill. But yeah, so this this girl, she's not with Denny. No, but I, I told her at one point, you know, that when I first saw her again and, and I saw that she had come with this dude, that I felt a little bit jealous, you know, a little bit of that young man jealousy, that teenage jealousy or whatever mm -hmm. it might be. And then she got up and sang... I guess there's this duet that Eminem does with Rihanna mm -hmm. and they did that together. And I told her, you've no idea how jealous I was of mm -hmm. the two of you doing that song. And she's like, what? Why? And I said, I, I don't know. I just <laughs> was. Even though you and I got up there and sang a song ourselves, we did Under Pressure, you know, with Bowie and, and uh, Freddie Mercury. And it, it, it sounded good. It's just a weird thing, you know, that I would be jealous of her doing the exact same thing with him that she's doing with me. Uh, and I told her that. And she's like, wow, well, I guess it was the Axl Rose costume. <laughs> we laughed about it. I guess it was. <laughs> it's interesting, the fact that she will hang out and talk with you until five in the morning. Yeah, that was really strange. That is one of those things that, if you ask me, that's a signal. Hmm. Okay, well, let's end this episode on that. The, this was the second all-night conversation we had had since I had her come back into my what passes for a life. <laughs> and the first time she said, don't, don't take this the wrong way, but you seem pretty clueless when it comes to girls. And I was like, oh, yeah, I guess I am. I, I didn't know how to react <laughs> to that. Was there a right way? You should have just said, take that. you have no idea. I may have because, <laughs> see, I use humor as a defense mechanism and I will be the first to insult myself so that if you insult me, it doesn't hurt so bad because A, my insult will have been funnier and two, I got it in first. And I always do that. I, you know, use jokes as a shield. It's like, I don't want somebody to get, to get in there where they can hurt me. And so I probably said, oh, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but I asked her this last week. I was reading in a book that day, and, and it said that women are naturally better at surveillance than men because women from a very young age have to watch out where they go. You know, am I being followed? What is that person's intentions toward me? Whereas men don't have that worry. Mm -hmm. they, that's something that they have to teach themselves, you know, mm -hmm. and women are better at sensing desire than men or the lack thereof. And so I mentioned this to her. I said, I read this just yesterday and it jumped out at me when I was sitting next to you at the bar tonight, because it says that women recognize desire or the lack thereof. And did you recognize that in me today that I was super into you for some reason? And she said, no, no, I didn't recognize that at all. I must not have the radar, the surveillance techniques that, you know, other women do. And I was like, Oh, okay. You I didn't see the gigantic erection in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> that would be an easy sign to notice. It was dark. <laughs> I don't know if this is interesting to talk about. I mean, it's certainly not funny. Or maybe it is. <laughs> maybe it's funny to people out there. I mean, hopefully there's somebody out there that's like, oh, I felt so bad about myself. Thank goodness Rich is talking. <laughs> I live a, a pretty decent life. You really had a wonderful life, Big Anklevich. Wait, how does Clarence talk? You know. really had a wonderful life. Now that sounded even more like it's Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy. You old Bailey building and loan. And, you know, if my pain can make other people feel good, then I think it's accomplished something. So that wasn't exactly a Valentine's Day thing. But, you know, a couple months ago, 
if we had sat down and had this conversation, I would have thought, oh, by Valentine's Day, she will be mine. And that never happened. I don't know. It's weird. If, if there was some kind of mutual attraction, I, I, I can't pick up on it. And, and like she said, I'm clueless. I have to have things spelled out in capital letters, in Arabic print or Arial print or Times New Roman. Whatever the big one is. Yeah. Arial wide, bold. There you go. I guess we hadn't meant to talk for very long, but so let's let people go their way. Once again, if you've got someone in your life, embrace them and say, oh, I'm so glad I'm not rich. That brings us to the end of the show. And, and I am rich. So and thank you for joining us. I'm Big Anklevich. Talk to you later. That Gets My Goat is published under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. On three, everybody make fun of Rish. Good night, folks. <laughs>